Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. And just when I think maybe I'm just going to take a few weeks off, it doesn't take much to find more RV drama. <laughs> yeah, so today I be uh, kind of picking on, I'm not really trying to pick on them, but um, it brings back, I mean, you guys hear some of our shows, you go, geez, you're a downer, Debbie Downer, Rob. And I mean to be, but I think it's because times are changing. So this show I'm going to start off with, a video that came from Dan and Jen, um, and uh, <clears throat> I've actually interviewed them on the show, and they're super, super nice people. And they had to call the sheriff. <clears throat> and by the time you hear the show, it's been like a week since their video came out. I'm going to show a clip of their show of the very ending of they posed a question to people, but I urge you, and I'll put a link in the description to go watch the video. And so let me just kind of type, um, put the story up a little bit. If you haven't seen the video is they're boondocking in Colorado and in the middle of the night, some guy, uh, pulled up not too far from their spot playing music real loud and, and made them nervous. And so, uh, Dan went outside he did take his firearm with him, didn't you, uh, didn't pull it or anything, just had it with him. And, uh, of course, had a good spotlight and, of course, flashed it over to the car over there. And a the guy is outside and freaks out, get that light out of my face. And anyway, so it was very nerve wracking. And long story short, they did call a sheriff. He really, the guy wasn't really breaking the law. And, they, he, and the guy did move to a different spot. But, of course, it made them uneasy all night, and I don't blame them. So here's a clip of the end of the report that they gave. And what I'm going to do is actually they ask, well, I pose a question. What would you do? And so this is my answer to that. So let's play that clip. Oh, it's, just, it's a little unnerving. It's not something I would want to do. Oh, but honestly, this is the, the reason I didn't sleep all night was because I kept being afraid he was going to come slash our tires or break a window or do something to the vehicle because he was he was really pissed off that we called the police. So I just was afraid he was going to do something. And <clears throat> anyway, that's enough of we, that. We throw the question out to you. Yeah. To have a conversation, we would love to hear your thoughts on this. We would love. I mean, honestly, and I'm not. I'm not just saying that. Are we too sensitive? Yeah. Do do you? If you boondock a lot, if you camp a lot, whatever, do you put up with that kind of... Would you sleep next to that guy? Um, are we just too sensitive because we lived out in the country and just didn't have to deal with this stuff? And, and you know, we, we just need to kind of get over it. This is the way the world is. Um, would you have handled it a different way after the fact, finding this guy next to you? Would, would you have confronted him or would you have, you know... And really, not... I'd love to say, I'd go up there with a the shotgun. I'd be like, get the hell out of here, but... Most of us, you know, it's like, it's more about my safety than proving some point. You know, would you have confronted him? Uh, would you have left? Would you have stayed? What What would you have done? Uh, we're, we're honestly curious. I think it's a good discussion. Yeah. So before we respond to all that and stuff, first of all, I want to take the time to say thank you to Dan and Jen. They're super neat people. They did invite this <laughs> uh, response uh, through their video. And uh, I do urge you to watch their videos. Uh, one is they're very realistic. Uh, they have had some very unusual things. They literally had someone break into their RV once up in Squim, Washington, and go to sleep in their bed. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how they could handle that. Anyway, they've had some rough times, but... Um, they're bringing up some points that I've continuously been bringing up in this show is about RV safety and especially boondocking. 
And uh, the responses that they got from the sheriff is exactly what we've been talking about on this show. So they had, a, um, and I, I urge you to go, I'm putting a link to their video uh, in the description. Please go watch them there and, and make sure you subscribe to their uh, channel because it really is a good RV channel. But, uh, and, and I, I can relate to them because I also lived in Central Oregon with five acres and had privacy and it was kind of a redneck town and everybody kind of took care of each other. And if there was anything unusual going on in the area, we band together. And you can bet that we're, uh, uh, everybody in Central Oregon is usually packing. So you don't want to be messing around in places like they lived in and where I used to live in too. Uh, it's just how it was. And uh, we took care of each other. But uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm saying is if you are uh, financially, let's say, mid-range and stuff, stay in the RV parks and stuff. But uh, uh, because they do have security and they're, they're comfortable and you don't have to ration your water and all that stuff. And yeah, I understand the boondocking and stuff, but um, the world's changing and we, I don't say, I'm not saying I like it. It's not a good change, but the world seems to be getting a little more radical and you can see it in our politics. You can see it in our schools, our universities, our news. Uh, it's, it's getting bad and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And that could be a whole nother show in which I have other platforms to talk about that. And what we're seeing it is this starting to bleed into the RV world. And as much as we kick and scream about, about it, it's, uh, it's happening. And, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to stop it. So the, the first question they posed on this video was, what would you have done? <laughs> and I think all of us would probably have done the same thing, um, is probably go outside and try to identify what they're hearing, which he did. And of course, right abruptly, he gets confronted with someone saying, get that light out of my face. Um, then, I mean, uh, I would try to rationalize like he probably did. Uh, he was packing, and uh, I think I might have done the same thing. But my first question is, uh, how would that destroy their life if the guy confronted him, scared him, came at him like he did with the sheriff in this video, and he shot him? Oh my gosh, would that ruin their life or what? Because it seems like your victims are condemned and their lives are just miserable between the law enforcement, someone suing them because it was a relative, and, and then the question of trying to rationalize whether it was a, a good shot. Uh, I mean, uh, how would they feel about boondocking after that? <laughs> And uh, that's the problem. I mean, even if we do defend ourselves, then you end up having to defend yourself again. And uh, sometimes it doesn't turn out, the victims turn out to be the criminals. And that's, a, that's terrible. And, uh, and it's happened. So that's the first problem. And of, of course, uh, if you use force, Somebody else might be carrying force too and may not know it and actually get himself hurt. And uh, so I can't say that's a good or bad decision. I'm not saying he shouldn't have been packing. Um, I probably would have too. But the consequences, if you're going to pack and you're going to use a weapon, you got to pay the consequences. Uh, just like the police department, those poor guys that have to put up with this stuff all day long, every day. Um, and so there's slip ups out there and it's like, the problem is we're only human. So I don't know the answer to that one, but I, I would say that I would have probably been packing too if I had a firearm.
Question two would be, would you have called the sheriff? And I think that was a good idea. And they didn't call 911. They actually called the, the, the district uh, just in case they thought that it wasn't a good idea to call 911. Uh, that's very kind of them, actually. I'm sure the police department uh, appreciates it. Um, and they treated it very uh, seriously, and they did come out with, actually, it sounds like with more than one patrol. Uh, the problem is they're on public land, and the guy did not break the law. So that's the big problem. So the big thing is if that guy was really uh and, and it turns out the guys just moved to a little different location, but still within their area. Uh, could that have made the situation even worse after the police left? Uh, yeah, it could have. And I'm sure that they didn't sleep too easy. And I, I believe if I heard the video correctly, they moved to a different location the next day. But uh, how much of this stuff is not being reported in the videos that you're watching from all these nomads? That's the true question. And I constantly see uh, a gal named Carolyn, and I've also watched another one, can't remember the name of her video, I have to check, where they're constantly nervous about the people around them. And then there's, uh, gosh, there's another video, a guy out there, he's a nomad, lives in a camper. I've talked about him in prior shows. He's constantly talking about the security risks and uneasiness that they've felt several times in nomad situations on public land. And it seems like more and more and more of this is coming up. And the bigger channels probably don't want to talk about much at all because they're trying to sell the RV lifestyle. And my question to you guys, and I'm hoping that, I mean, I know you sh you're watching all the other channels of the happiness and the cool funness of, of this full-time RVing, but you need to hear the other side, and that's what we're all about. RV Talk Radio is about RV living and RV lifestyle. It's not about repairs and things like that. Uh, occasionally, we'll talk about that, but am I an RVer? Yes. Uh, am I a full-timer? Not anymore. I was twice, me and Sherry. And we might do it again um, after we get in our 60s. Um, but I like the idea of having a home base. Not to mention, if I go to some place and I get a sour situation, uh, I would uh, definitely uh, just say, I, I want to go back home. And uh, uh, if you want to cure this problem of this, one is don't boondock. Uh, or be very, very picky about where you boondock and be prepared to move and also probably be armed or have some preventative issues in case some weirdo shows up. Uh, the problem is a lot of times is either mental illness or drugs. And the problem is is, is the homeless situations we're having all over and these issues are coming from folks that are homeless, not because they want to be, because they either can't afford to live in a normal lifestyle or drugs are involved. And drugs are, before, it's just druggies, you know, that sort of, now we got a critical problem out there. That's where most of the homelessness is happening. Uh, the bad, the dark side of these old RVs people are living in and people living on the streets. The true, true report is most of it's drug oriented. They get addicted and the opioids and all these other things that are out there and it destroys their lives. These people need help and they're not getting it. And that's a whole nother show in itself. <laughs> and I've talked about the RV and the homelessness situations on this show before. And so this guy could be another example of someone who's a little bit on the druggy side and doesn't have a place to live and he just kind of roams about where he can be left alone and yet unfortunately drew attention to himself. And then it, it sounded like he was not the most stable individual in the world. 
and we will continue this conversation after this message. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. So uh, analyzing this a little bit more, I guess I almost have some questions for them. Is uh, Number one question. Is boondocking really worth it? That's the first thing. And uh, I mean, there's pros and cons, but really, is it is it worth it as compared to staying at comfortable RV parks and state parks and national parks? That's my first question. The two second question is, why did you sell your house in the first place? And are you having second uh, <laughs> notions about that? Have you thought maybe... Because yeah, they said, I mean, and, and and I don't have those issues here either, that they just never had to deal with this kind of stuff in a regular having their own property. Why can't you do both? Why can't you? Um, I mean, I just really, I mean, it may be really good reasons for all that stuff. Why subject yourself to this? And of course, when I had situations I didn't like, I because I'm kind of old school, it's like I'm putting my wife in danger. Now, I'm not saying he, they are and stuff. I'm just talking about me, myself. I didn't like the fact that I put my wife in situations that she shouldn't have have to deal with. Of course, the other side of it is like, we should be able to do what we want. <laughs> yeah, but the truth is the world's changing. Folks like me, probably them too, are just like, what, what's going on? Just like in that video, they're like, are we doing something wrong? And I think the answer to that is no. Is the world changing? Yes. In a good way? Not really. Uh, of course, there's good things out there. Uh, but in the situations that we're talking about, and my concern on safety and people uh, boondocking and living the RV lifestyle is getting the truth is really hard because the RV channels are out. Use, the ones that are really making the videos are trying to make money off of their videos and their t-shirts and their stickers and whatever else they're doing to actually have the money to even do what they're doing. The reason they're boondocking is because they don't make that much money. They got a scrimp on everything they do, including their camping fees. So, uh, you need, I know there's a lot of new people out there that are interested in RVing and stuff. I wish that you would understand that if you do it, it's a wonderful, it's fun. There's no doubt. But, just like neighborhoods and stuff like that, unfortunately, our boondocking areas are known to be places where people can stay for free, and especially if they're homeless, which in a, usually if they're homeless, most of the time there's either a mental, physical, or uh, a drug issue that's forced them to be homeless. And so their goal every day is to find places to live, to be left alone, and for free, of course. And unfortunately, the places like BLM land and, and, and free camping and stuff, they're not, 
those people aren't stupid. And it, unfortunately, they have unfortunate lifestyles. But they know that places like where they were on public land, they could go and sleep the night in their car. It's sad. I don't like it. I don't like the laws changing. And like I'm an outdoor fishing and hunting kind of guy and watch the rules change and watch the... Uh, all of our privileges go away because of a handful of people. Um, and so probably, I'm just assuming that those two are probably going through some of the same growing pains I'm going through. Like, when I grew up, we didn't have these issues. When I grew up, there was a lot of first-come, first-served camping. When I grew up, we didn't have... Well, either that, we were just totally ignorant. So many strange happenings <laughs> I just put it that way <laughs> and I feel for them and so they say well are we doing something wrong and I think is I think the answer is you're not changing with the times or understanding this is a new world and it's only going to get worse and we are sitting there doing RV shows and inviting people out here for this lifestyle without telling them about this and that's what's good about Dan and Jen is they're telling you what's going on others don't really talk about it because they're all they're only interested in views and uh, uh, so their shows are always fluffy and, and stuff and I do appreciate the good shows that show where they're at and stuff like that and uh, uh, but yeah um, but yeah I, I give those guys credit um, and I don't want to think this show is not bashing their channel at all. In fact, it's enhancing it. I hope is we urge you to subscribe to Jan and Dan and <laughs> Janet, Janet, Dan and Jen. <laughs> they are very nice people. Uh, I am mad at them that they didn't stop and visit us when they're in Arizona. I guess I, uh, of course, that was after, like we said, we did a show the other day. We do these shows for these people. They get all famous and then they turn their backs on us and so uh we kind of felt that way a little bit with them too we had a perfect opportunity to meet them in arizona and they said oh we're busy <laughs> sorry it's like all right fame and fortune but anyway still good people still nice people uh and uh i i hope you follow the channel make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel uh they they do regular shows do regular they stay on schedule and uh, there's, uh, but make sure you give yourself enough time. Their videos are usually about 20 minutes long or, or more. So uh, give yourself the time to listen to them and you can handle it. You can do it. Watch their shows. We have a crisis. Dogs are dropping all over the nation, affecting large and small dogs of all breeds. Citizens are crying out for good dog waste bags. Dog owners' demands have been answered. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags on rolls and sheets. Quality materials, easy tie handles, deeper design, lemon scented on rolls and sheets and made with love. Available at Amazon with free shipping. Well, Line Screw One, he uh, put out another video and this one was actually RV oriented. <laughs> Uh, I don't blame him. <laughs> it, it gets kind of old about all this the story. Uh, it's hard. I mean, a lot of the stories in RVs stuff is usually the same old stuff over and over. So uh, uh, he's he's getting tired of it too. So he only reports when things get kind of weird, and so do I. So uh, anyway, he did a report on New Zealand. Uh, actually, created their first. Uh, I don't know if it's the first, but. Uh, electric RVs they're very small little class C little things uh, still they don't have I mean I think because they're heavier and bulkier they only have a range of about 75 miles before they have to be recharged uh, have a ways to go but they um, I watched this video and what he showed is they look cuter to Dickens um, hopefully over time when our technology gets better that uh, hopefully we can get a little more range on these things. Those things wouldn't stand a chance over here in the United States. So anyway, um, 
interesting because you know you hear about the green deal and all that stuff and i i'm sure i'll stir up feathers on this but uh just isn't practical and if you're an rver uh you may as well kiss your rv goodbye if they're going to go up with some of the rules that they want to talk about uh trucks and and getting rid of uh you know big rigs and stuff like that and um that that would pretty much take care of like well, how are people going to have trucks how are they going to have motorhomes how are we going to transport things um anyway they got to work out that issue but uh, uh their, their hearts are in the right place i guess but uh yeah <laughs> anyway lane screw one i want to thank you for that video it was a good video moving on the next uh, channel i was going to comment is uh little house on the road uh he's the nomad that i refer to a lot i keep forgetting the name of his channel uh just watched the video where he uh, found free camping which actually had electric and water which uh is amazing uh he's the one that really points out that the, the nomad lifestyle can be very stressful and uh very uh, many times uh they felt that there was a safety issue um, he did take the time in Texas to uh, point out a wonderful memorial for our veterans. We never talk about them enough. And uh, actually, recently, I've been studying, uh, especially since it was uh, Memorial Day weekend, I started to, I've been doing a lot more, I guess because I don't want to forget, but I know our young generation just isn't interested they don't have appreciation for history. Some do, um, and uh, it's an exception. Anyway, to uh, I watched a lot of uh, timelines for uh, D-Day, and that was, oh my gosh! And I, I just, it's so easy. I can see why this our old younger generation just uh, the schools aren't teaching it anymore. And they're more worried about feelings. They need to know just what our veterans have did in World War One, World War Two, Korea, uh, Vietnam, uh, anywhere that they're serving, of you know giving the ultimate sacrifice. And that's the problem with the generation. And I think we're seeing it also in our you know uh, the boondocking. And I'm bringing this to why are we seeing this stuff. And I think there's this non-appreciation of uh, is our veterans were not selfish. And uh, they also um, will sacrifice. And that's the word I was looking for, sacrifice. Um, everybody back then made a sacrifice, either their time, being away from home, giving their lives, um, it was, and then a lot of people say, read the letters and stuff from people that were in the, uh, uh, war old letters. And he, you know, and they're all talking about the better good and things like that. And, and this generation, when they read it, totally don't understand the nationalism of, and protection and stopping Hitler and stopping Japan and, and all these things. And, and, and we, as Americans came together and also was an honor to get, uh, to sacrifice either your time, either your resources, uh, your labor, whatever you could do it to support our uh, armed forces. And uh, as time has go, gone on, and we're watching how the generations are not taking care of you know, it's all about me. It's all about being selfish. It's all about I'm camping here. Who cares about anybody around me? Uh, respect, things like that. Those are the things that are diminishing. I don't know how to bring them back. I almost think we almost have to have a crisis for people to realize, especially our young generation, that they've had it easy. And, uh, uh, many of you folks that are my age or older, uh, we either just got away from all that. Like when I was a kid, uh, or a teenager, the draft was just over with, with Vietnam. 
And uh, so I never, I didn't go into the military. My kids did, uh, but I didn't. I was a college boy. And, uh, but my parents, it was so fresh in their minds and stuff like that, drew um, just um, constantly reminded me not to take things for granted and how hard it was then and why my grandma will always cook potatoes all the time because back in the, those days, that was the main food. Um, little things like that were instilled in me. And so it makes me the way I am today and probably why Dan and Jen are the way they are is like they're a little old school and uh, their parents and our schools taught us all this stuff and told us about our history. And so uh, we appreciate it. And so when we see this new lifestyle, this new generation, this new time of and and seeing these people that are just don't know the word about sacrifice it's all about taking um it's hurting everything and the things that we did as kids uh our kids would never get a chance to do and uh i almost felt like we had much more safety back then too even though we didn't have to be protected so much and it's kind of sad and, and seeing it happening and, and you can see it in these reports that are coming in from all these different channels. And, and of course, the big ones, they're not really talking about it much because they're into trying to get into your wallet. And I will not stop emphasizing that they're all about getting into your wallet and you paying for their uh, travels. And some of you might be just fine with that. But uh, uh, I think it's a little bit of a cop-out myself. So I uh, have found it refreshing to come across another RV channel, since I seem to be on RV channel gossip this week. Again, uh, a channel called RV Lifestyle, which is an older couple, obviously retired, um, enjoying the RV life. And uh, they are probably the stable uh, uh, <laughs> look at RVing as a full-time lifestyle. I don't know if they have a base, uh, but they uh, seem pretty down to earth. Uh, yeah, I can tell you go into the description, there isn't like 20 different uh, uh Amazon products for sale and stickers and t-shirts. Uh, so they're just going out, having a good time, reporting where they're at. They have quite the following. It looks like they have about 75,000 subscribers. Great channel. I highly recommend them. So if you haven't uh, seen their channel or haven't subscribed to them, they're called RV Lifestyle. And uh, I think you'll like that because it's down to earth and... Uh, isn't quite so commercialized that they're trying to make you pay for their travels. I think they got it handled. <laughs> so there's a good channel I would check out uh, along with uh, the Jan and Din. Uh, <laughs> so sorry. Dan and Jen's channel. Uh, you'll get a kick out of that. And, and there's even some nomads out there that are worth watching if you can get past some of the stuff. Like, I still, I even say Nomadic Fanatic's not bad to watch because of his photography. Um, and uh, But the immatureness a lot of times, like right now, his biggest thrill is having a big screen TV and a lounge chair. Uh, I have news for you. If you have a house, you can have one of those. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, anyway... Uh, but yeah, so RV Lifestyle, that's a, a channel I'd highly recommend if you're looking for down-to-earth RV information that's, I would say, pretty real. So one more channel I, uh, I, I catch once in a while, because usually she has a crisis, I think it's called Creativity RV, and I put a link uh, to most of the channels I talked about today of the particular videos I was watching. So in this particular case, uh, they're over near um, Winnemucca, boondocking somewhere. I've been there several times. Uh, not the nicest city in the world. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
the, I guess it was more than one of them uh, boondocking together, which is good. Uh, got creeped out because some stranger, once again, showed up in the middle of the night about 2 a.m., uh, freaked them all out, and they all decided to move. She does talk about an interesting app that she watches that, um, that you, she uses to find places to go park that truckers use. And so at 2 a.m. in the morning, they're driving to what they felt was one of the more uh, a, a, a great place for where trucks like to stop and uh, found a, what they felt like was a comfortable place to stay. So I don't know. I, I guess what I'm saying here is, is that how you want to live? And I'm saying this to these people that envy me like, oh, I'd like to get out there and do this. And seriously, seriously, do you really want to live like that? Especially if you actually have money or actually have decent income. Why would you live like that? Constantly worried about where you're staying or getting knock on the door in your RV in the middle of the night. Lord knows who's going to be at that door um, when you're in the boondocking situations. I constantly question as fun as some of this stuff sounds at least this gal that uh, does creativity rv is is truthful of saying when she gets freaked out and and there's m many more women uh, by themselves single women that are doing this rv lifestyle and nomading and uh so uh, i know that that's appealing to some of you folks out there but once again, are you really, really up for this? Are you really? And, it, and it's not getting better. As I had chances to monitor the channel. When I was actually RVing, I had less chance to actually watch other channels. But now that I'm uh, based right now, um, I have a chance to jump through different videos. I can't watch them all. It's impossible. But I always get the ones that I think either give fairly reasonable reports or ones that are just totally insane and you just gotta just gotta see it like are you kidding me um and some of these no matters are they're like little party machines and uh i i just don't get it and uh i just i question you guys that are thinking about coming out here are coming out there to do that kind of stuff is that really the way you want to live looking over your shoulder a lot do you have to do that now why do you want to enter that kind of lifestyle if you're not doing it now because you will be and you will consider should I start packing should I have a weapon should I protect myself should I have pepper spray do you have to worry about that now and some of you do um, but really, that's what you're going to have to deal with, along with the good stuff, too. There's plenty of good. Um, just to save a buck. So anyway, food for thought. Probably the last channel I'm going to review today is uh, the Freedom Theory. Then I'll talk about us a little bit. Um, they put out a video about deciding what matters. And so I've known those folks for quite a while. And uh, uh, they, you know, we seem like we're pretty good friends. I, you know, we're a little bit older than they are, so we're probably boring to them. But uh, anyway, she's trying to develop a product. Well, obviously, you guys know I've done that already um, with the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Uh, she's trying to develop a, a bra for uh, nursing and stuff. And uh, uh, in fact, I'm in some business networks here in Arizona where some gals are uh, involved in that kind of stuff. And so there's a lot to learn. There's no doubt. But I got a kick out of her. She kind of started ranting off to the side. And I put a link to that video uh, in our description. Um, and I do highly recommend if you want an enjoyable uh, kind of family-oriented uh uh, RV channel, there's this, uh, a great one. I, I have always recommend them. So um, sometimes there's a lot of drama, but that's just how they roll. Anyway, uh, she was talking about endorsing products and what it takes to do that. And in fact, we just endorsed a product just the other day. Um, it has 
we put it on the Outdoor Travel Channel, but it's uh, uh, we've done videos like it uh, pertaining to a portable solar um, cell with uh, uh, that's you can carry around with you hiking and stuff. And I'm into prepping a little bit, and so uh, uh, they asked if I'd review it, and I said sure, send it on over, and we did it, and I just did a review on it. So if you look at our channel, you'll see we did a review on the uh, uh, portable solar charger. And, uh, and by the way, that thing was awesome, totally awesome. And uh, so that's when we, uh, if it was a garbage, we wouldn't have done a review on it. So, because uh, we always tell them we're going to test it first, and then we'll record what we test. And I like to keep my, I made the video realistic and kind of down to earth. So I didn't use a big platform. We didn't use our studio, all that stuff. And just show you guys, I actually used it and tested it and, and uh, it was a good product, so yeah, go check that one out. Uh, the other, one, but they're saying, but it does take a lot of work. Uh, it took me five, six days to produce that video for them because it was a solar charger, and so I wanted to charge it up normally, run our cell phones off of it, and drain the battery, and then I wanted to put it outside and and recharge it just on solar, and which it did quite quickly, and then test a few more times and. Um, uh, then we produced the video and of course we took video of, uh, as we went and also how we hooked up our phones and all that stuff and how easy it was. And so, yeah, whenever you do a review, it's like, uh, of course you want to make the companies happy. They were uh, pleased with the way we did the video. Um, but they could have been not pleased. And I may have had to do it again or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, so if you're going to be that kind of channel and then you're going to endorse products and then a lot of times they're not sending you money, they'll send you the product and you can keep it. Um, so it's not, not big money involved and stuff like that. But um, I found developing my own product, I was darn glad that I have a home base. Um this has given me plenty of time to develop our product. Mark, it's one thing to have a product. The next one's marketing. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, of course, it's going to be different for every uh, product. But ours is obviously pet and dog uh, oriented, where theirs is going to be women's wear and fashion or uh, ma uh, maternity. So uh, uh, tough road to hoe. And I'm glad I'm not trying to do it from an RV. I can tell you that for sure. And... Uh, <clears throat> so they're always fighting with their uh, uh, responsibilities of being having a new child and also the deal of trying to develop with their uh, supporting their careers and then trying to develop a product. Um, I wonder sometimes how many times they question, maybe we should have a base to do some of this stuff. And uh, if they're not thinking of that, they'd be lying. I just can't believe that they wouldn't be thinking about that. But, uh, you know, there's certain things that you, if, you, if you're if you a young couple and you got to make money, that's just all there is to it. And uh, even my age, we still have to make money. Um, we don't have, I do have, you know, the pension part, but that's not enough. You got to wait till the Social Security kicks in and stuff like that. And even that's going to be fairly tight. So, uh, uh, so in the meantime, how do you make money? Well, of course, Sherry and I, we're trying to develop a product before we get into our 60 retirement time, time and uh, uh, have a, a secondary income on top of those things. And uh, luckily, we're giving ourselves time at a base to develop this product. And it's going to take a while. And uh, so, you know, we got past the design phase. We we're past the having the inventory phase. The next one is getting it out there. And just because you're in Amazon doesn't make it magical. There's thousands of people in Amazon. It's, for us, we need to get into retail stores. Well, boy, there's that's a whole other battle. And then, of course, we try to find channels that will do a review. And, of course, the RV ones are... Oh, it's like, okay, guys, we... Um, we can't get some of them want to hold still long enough for us to get a product to them. Well, we're kind of busy and moving around a lot. And it's like, okay. And they all have dogs and pets like that. And it's like, okay, we could send you free samples. You have free poopy bags for quite a while. We'd even donate to their channels. And it's like, they still can't get them to hold still and do that kind of stuff. They're, uh, uh, like I said, sometimes their business or, um, uh, uh, business relationships are, 
not very professional. And so uh, others are. It's just how it goes. But anyway, uh, I, I, uh, I put a link to their video about talking about balancing things and, and, and putting uh, video creativity as a secondary thing instead of first. Uh, I know that when I first met them, they were all about making videos and getting big and popular. And uh, now that their family's grown and life's gone on a little bit, they're going, this is getting ridiculous. It's like, um, <laughs> and it does. Oh my gosh, when you're really doing just videos and trying to get your channel growing and stuff, you're carrying a stupid camera everywhere you go. I mean, uh, uh, it's insane. And so uh, I've uh, actually started tapering off from all that so now I'm, my biggest problem is remembering to bring a camera and uh, <laughs> but when you're uh, just engulfed in just the RV subject and trying to make content um, it's hard to enjoy what you're doing and that's another thing she talked about in the video is it's like well, we want to get make this where it's fun to record again when it's fun to talk to the camera and uh, I totally understand what they're talking about. And you only have to be a creator to know what they're talking about is uh, you get so involved in trying to make a channel work and it's harder and harder. I mean, uh, as the years go by, YouTube is making it tougher and tougher to get a channel even up and running and monetized. Uh, along with the other things of being what they call an influencer, uh, where you can actually make money from your uh, Instagram and, and some other things you do. And uh, uh, I know uh, Kylie's much more involved in that stuff than we are. And uh, she's got the great personality for it. And uh, so, yeah, she, she'll, uh, but I can see she is facing burnout, which is uh, very easy. And I, I got into it too, where we're just constantly making videos. It was all about videos and inter internet connection. And uh, it gets really old. And, and it's like, are you really enjoying the lifestyle if you're doing that? Really? You, that's another thing you need to consider. If you're new or you're an outsider looking in, thinking about doing this, and you think that maybe uh, I'll subsidize myself with videos and stuff, um, I'm not going to say think again, but think again about you need to understand from the creators that are willing to work with you to uh, realize it's not as easy as it looks and it does take a lot of your time and there is expenses you've got to spend money on uh, computers uh, internet connections and software and of course cameras and uh, and audio audios you gotta try to do the best audio I, I I could certainly spend more money in the audio side of things but yeah I'm not if I was back on the road again uh, which will happen. I probably have to invest in some more audio equipment that's better for outdoors. And uh, yeah, it's uh, not easy, guys. Well, this, we're getting kind of towards the end of the show, and I want to take the time right this minute to make sure everybody's clear how much I appreciate all the shows that we talked about today. Um, some of them are funny, some are not so funny, some of them are really good channels. Uh, I made sure, please go down to our description, and if you have never heard of some of these channels, click on the links I left you and subscribe to their channels. Um, a lot of hard work goes into some of these channels, and some of them are great, and, and then some of them are ridiculous sometimes, um, but... Um, I think the one link I didn't put on there, which a lot of folks I need you to go find, is called Line Screw One. Uh, he's up in Canada. Uh, his videos are very interesting and very short and sweet. And he's a very good uh, uh, graphics designer and uh, and videographer guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, and he seems to have a uh, a good heart, so he's always been kind to us. Um, and of course, uh, Nomadic Fanatic, I didn't put his link in there either because pretty easy to find his stuff. If you like photography, and he does do a very good job of showing his surroundings, uh, you could appreciate his channel. Um, some of his personal things might get under your skin, but 
Uh, if you can get past that part, um, uh, he does have a good channel. And he's got lots of followers, so he's been around a while. His first videos were ugh, something else. But anyway, but he did inspire a lot of people to hit the road, too. So uh, good, bad, or indifferent. But I do. I want to make sure you understand that even though we kind of gossip about these guys and stuff, we do appreciate them a lot, and we do um, support their channels, and we do suggest you um, – see what's going on there. I kind of like the ones I've been talking about because they're very truthful of what they're seeing out there. It's not all, you know, uh, wine and roses. Um, so that's good. Um, yeah, amazing stuff. Uh, we are looking forward to, in less than a month, we are going to be bringing our RV back from Oregon. It's been up there for quite a while, as you guys know. And uh, we'll have it back down here, and we'll start... Um, one is uh, uh like to get it kind of cleaned out. We wanted to clean the carpets, but I'm afraid to do it up in the northwest because of mold. And down here, of course, it's hot. It's like over 100 here today. And uh, what a great time to clean the carpets, open up those windows on that, and make sure it dries out well. Um, this would be a great place to do that. So we're looking forward to getting our RV back home. We're going to probably stop in Vegas. I'll have it detailed at the Oasis RV Resort. They have a, um, a mobile cleaning units that you just can't beat. And uh, then bring it home and then uh, detail the inside of it, get it all the way we want it. And uh, it would be nice to have it home and then do some uh, weekend warrior. We do more than just weekends. Uh, things here in Arizona or the surrounding areas that we're just dying to go to. So uh, for those of you who may be new to listening to RV Talk Radio, we have a uh, 3625 uh, 2013 Montana. We pull it with a 2002 Ford Lariat um, uh, Dually with the 7.3 uh, diesel. Love our truck. And we're going to, I've got over 200,000 miles on that thing. You believe that, guys? It still fires up like a new truck. It's amazing. It's a great, great truck. And I'm and when it breaks, I'm just going to fix it and keep it running. Because have you seen the prices of a of a new dually? <laughs> Even if I blew up the engine, it'd be cheaper than buying a new dually. And I wouldn't have to deal with that uh, deaf stuff. Um, anyway, it's kind of nice. But so that's our plans coming up uh, fairly soon. So we'll uh, start kicking out more RV videos and travel. And uh, looking forward to that. We're uh, kind of holding off and stuff because with the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, we have a large shipment of the new designs that we just came out with the rolls and the dispenser. And I'm waiting for that shipment to come from overseas. comes in a pallet, about 1,500 units. And uh, uh, we got some of the units sent early. Um, but it's cheaper to do the 30 day shipping by, by ship. It literally ships. Um, and so, uh, that's how we have our new products in Arizona, um, Amazon already, but, uh, you know, it's only like 25 of each one. So <laughs> we, uh, so, you know, we have 30 days to kind of sweat it out and make sure we don't go lose all of our inventory. But anyway, once that's here and, and put in place, then we can uh, we have our daughter to kind of help us out for any things that need to be shipped. Um, but uh, then we can hit the road and go play a little bit. And, and, of course, it gives us a chance to, once again, kind of market our products and meet people. And, uh, yeah, you just got to get out there and network. So uh, and I mentioned to you, we're also in Arizona. It's called My Business Network in Mesa. And uh, are affiliated with them, which is, you know, uh, meeting locals and finding businesses to support your products and things like that. So, yeah, those are the things you got to do when you're developing a product. And uh, Kylie from Freedom Theory is going to be learning that or already has. And uh, so, yeah, um, that's um, interesting. Uh, once again, I came from the RV. Well, I mean, I'm thankful the fact that we're full time RVers to get out there and realize people are struggling about either picking up after their animals. But when you get free dog pickup stuff and like that, they usually go with real cheap ones and stuff. And so I always found that I want I had a certain kind of poopy bag I'd like to have just to make it a little more pleasant and easy to pick up. 
and so uh, they're hard to come by. So what better yet than design your own? So uh, that was my motivation, along with Kylie's going through the issues of uh, having a child and childbearing, and and um, uh, found a product that she's passionate about. And that's good. Learning passion is important. I mean, uh, a passion for your job, a passion for your career, passion for your hobbies and things like that can be good. Uh, they can get overbearing sometimes. You need to keep that in mind. But I do want to take the time to thank every one of you folks for listening to RV Talk Radio. We appreciate the feedback we get. We normally get really professional uh, pro uh, pro or con comments, and I really appreciate that. <clears throat> And uh, one person says, oh, you sound bitter. <laughs> it's like, no, not really. I just, right now I have the opportunity to respond and to uh, monitor what's going out there. Uh, there'll be a time where I won't have a time, uh, time to watch the other channels the way I can right now. So I'm having fun and having a chance to, and, and for those that have really good channels that like to be, uh, have a shout out, we'll be happy if I, you know, if there really are good channels. We certainly will give them shout outs, and especially if you're a small channel, every little bit helps. And so I've said this in our shows before, a lot of times we've helped new channels get started, then they get big, and then they turn their backs on us, and it's real sad. Um, they forget the people that actually helped them get there in the first place. Every channel, every shout out you get, whether and, and we have the same thing with our radio stations, is we're not the biggest radio station, but if we get you one more viewer, two more viewers, then that's a good thing because each viewer can cause you to get more viewers. So every person you connect with, whether big channels or little channels, to work together on is important. And so don't jump straight to their uh, subscriptions and they say, oh, they're just a small channel. And they, especially with this radio station, people don't, or this podcast, miscalculate what we do because our YouTube is really weak but that's not where the listeners come from they come from Spreaker they come from uh, iHeartRadio they come from Good Talk Radio where we're syndicated they come from iTunes and TuneIn and also Google Play and uh, you guys don't see that and we can't really show those numbers and so a lot of them will think, well, he's got a small YouTube following, and which is true because we are not as niche as these other channels. We will be. Um, so, yeah, that happens. So, guys, if you're smart, give us a holler. We'll try to work together with you. Um, but can you try to remember us after you get famous? <laughs> That'd be kind of nice. Maybe you could help us. Anyway, guys, have a great week. Buy yourself an RV. Use common sense, do your research, and have fun. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.